Hey guys, so today I'm gonna talk about Ikoria and give you a really good assessment as to whether or not you should buy it. Now, I think Alpha Investment said that you should buy it because the print run will be lower. So he's comparing it to 2008. 2008 was the financial crisis. I know that very well because I was I graduated a little bit early, December 2008. And that was not the best time to be looking for a job in New York City. Uh, the financial crisis, I was there when Lehman Brothers went belly under. So Ikoria, um, he is right. Those sets that came out in 2008, I believe. So Ravnica was when I was in college. I, I think it's Lorwyn, Morning Tide, Evening Tide, those sets um, during that 18-month period of uh, the 2008 financial crisis. So he is right about that. But I disagree with Ikoria in general. Um, I think there are so many better things you could have bought back then. You could have bought Black Lotuses. You could have bought Dual Land. It's not necessarily of, hey, you know, look at what the price is today. Well, I mean, you can look at Bla Black Lotus in 2008 and compare it to today. So the, op the cost of opportunity, which is what you do want to do with your money. Now, I would say that the, one of the last things you should look at is buying magic cards <laughs> and then, quote, investing in new magic product. Um, you know, if you invested in Merrill Lynn stock or like Rudy did cruise stocks, you would be like 100% okay. But you invested in like boxes of Lorwyn, who's to say that investing in a cruise stock or a cruise bond is worse than a box of Lauren. It's not. FYI. Um, so it's kind of like, do as I say, don't do as I do. Right? Otherwise, you would be investing in bonds, which is what Rudy did at the time. And he's been very open with that. So, and I haven't seen too many boxes of Lorwyn evening tide, morning tide from him. I've seen a lot of boxes or before that and a lot of boxes after but I don't ever remember a video where he's showing off these 2008 depression boxes because again it's there's a reason they're so expensive because no one had the money to buy them and here we go with Ikoria do I think Ikoria will be a good set blank no do I think buying into Pharaoh's regular boxes or collected editions is smart right now no blank no I think Throne of the Elder Inn is no, blank no. These are standard sets, guys. If no one is playing standard, then what value do they have? Like, are you saying these sets are going to be so powerful somehow? No, they've already banned all the powerful cards. So, yeah, they've already been banned. Oko, Once Upon a Time, good luck. It's kind of like, oh, hey, that Chase Mythic did it was really good. Well, it's not worth a lot of money today, is it? So Ikoria, um, where to begin from Ikoria? Uh, the collector's booster boxes are absolute garbage. I've always said this and I will continue to say this until they get rid of this product. The regular booster boxes are also garbage because of the collector's booster boxes. It goes hand in hand um, in terms of finance. Ikoria is going to be the end all be all of most local game stores. They're not going to survive this. I know a lot of you are saying, oh, you can take a loan. You know the loans still have interest, right? And they need to be repaid. So it's kind of like, oh, well, the solution is to get more in debt. So local game stores are already heavily leveraged, heavily in debt. And yes, they can take a loan to, uh, to not be open. Sounds smart to me. You know that no revenue is coming in, and even best case scenario, when this is all over, people will just play MTG Arena anyway for Standard. Standard is dead. And that's what I thought MTG Arena's goal was. It's to kill Standard in local game stores. I fully expect multiple local game stores in my area to go belly up, and I'm going to buy them. Because I have a very good understanding of business because I've run businesses before and I've sold a business for quite a bit of money. 
I didn't own that business I sold, which is unfortunate, but nonetheless, I did the whole legal proceedings. I did the venture capital. I did. I found the investors, and and this was in 2012 to 2015. So I had the whole cycle, and I'm still interested in buying businesses today. There was a delivery app which I spoke to the guy, and the guy was batshit crazy. He wanted a valuation of 2.5 million on revenues of 50,000 and I just told him you know I basically scolded him for about half an hour to tell him like this is not going to work there's going to be what I'm interested in these stories I'm not interested in taking their rent but I'm interested in their inventory a lot of inventory is coming on the market for massive discounts and they will continue to come on the market um, as soon as some people panic, everyone panic. It's like toilet paper, right? As soon as you see a dude buy some toilet paper, then everyone in the store is rushing to buy toilet paper, and then there's no toilet paper anymore. But that's the same mentality when people sell. As soon as, let's say, Vintage MTG begins making videos about selling his collection, hey, other people are going to make videos about selling collections, and Rudy's made videos about, um, hey, you know, I've seen a lot of revised. He's really smitten on re revised boxes, which is kind of weird. But nonetheless, that is a good, that's what he's been tracking this whole time. And he's saying that there's way more supply. And instead of one to two people contacting him a day, five to ten, and probably even more, are contacting him a day. At the end of the day, it's a bloodbath. And cash is your most valuable asset. So the longer you hold on to cash during the next, I think, 30, 60 days for sure, the better off you're going to be. Because I don't know what the best buy is. It could be a donut shop. I'm really interested in buying a donut shop. One just went on sale for $55,000 at my neighborhood. I thought that'd be kind of cool. You know, hang out at the donut shop that you own. Uh, maybe an ice cream shop. Now, of course, the problem is the rent and the lease, right? Because if you buy it, you're not buying the property, of course. You're just buying equipment and whatever. And who really wants to eat donuts? I guess I could eat donuts all day. That doesn't sound too bad. I'm actually craving a donut really bad right now. I have not left my home in like a week, uh, which sucks because, you know, I actually, um, I'm very frugal and I save and I'm one of those people who already had toilet paper, hand sanitizer, because Amazon delivered it to us every month. Trail mix and snacks and ramen. We have probably over half a year supply of just ramen and trail mix. Not just naturally. Even before this uh, viral outbreak, we just have that because we work at home. We work in my home. So we're fully stocked on Red Bull and all of this uh, interesting things. And on top of that, because my business, I had to buy back my business in 2018, I wanted to build up a cash fund, and that's what I did. And because I sold my stocks before the market went to crap, I'm financially okay. Now, gold and silver I kept. Silver has been decimated for some reason. But again, okay, whatever. It's a loss. It's a loss. My 401k, which I did not touch, has also been decimated. So, yeah. But luckily, because my business um, has cash assets and has PayPal assets, I think we'll be fine. I'll be fine. A, a lot of businesses are not going to be fine. A lot of your local game stores are never going to recover from this. They're bar they were barely making ends meet at the best time, which is 2019. Low unemployment, high spend. Definitely a luxury. Magic the Gathering is absolutely a luxury good. You don't need it. to. You can play MTG Arena for free. So even if you thought that you really needed to play Magic, you can. It's online. That's the future of Magic. So back to my uh, premise. And I think I have a pretty interesting premise for you guys. I think the opportunity will come when you can buy entire stores for 10 to 20%. So you know how like most stores are trying to buy list, you know, trying you know, whenever you sell a card to them, like GameStop, they kind of lowball. I think you can buy GameStops for ten to twenty percent in the future. 
So I'm not sure that you want to spend your cash right now, not because I don't think Magic is going to be fine. I think Magic will be fine. I think a lot of people are causing... Um, it will go down, of course. I'm not saying that it's... You know, everything is down. But the reason I believe it will be fine is because it's something that people enjoy and something that people, you know, spend money on. And there's something that people take pride in owning, ownership of. Paper magic is one of these anonymies because it shouldn't even exist today. In today's digital realm where everything is online, paper magic is kind of the exception in terms of value. Artwork has value. I'm not comparing magic to artwork, but there is a collectability element of it. Like revised lands, for instance, you know, no one uses them anyway, right? For ED, it's only for EDH. Legacy has been dead for years. So why are they still so valuable? And they're not even that rare. Like unlimited, you can make the argument that unlimited is collectible. But I don't think anyone would make the argument that Revised is collectible. The reason that they are so valuable in the, you know, gold standard of Magic cards, right? Easy to trade. I mean, what in, what can you not trade a dual land into up or down? You can trade for standard. You can trade for moxes, right? It's because their utility is unique. And EDH players just want them. Ikoria to summarize, is going to destroy a lot of local game stores because normally they would rely on that to generate income, and now they cannot. Hi, guys.